In this lesson, let's learn how to solve equations by multiplication. So, our, the equations we're going to look at will look something like this. X divided by 5 equals 9. So, remember we're always trying to get the X isolated. We want X to be by itself so that the equation says X equals some number. So, I have to get rid of this divided by 5. Now, you know from experience that any number divided by itself equals 1. So, if I could just have a 5 in the top, those 5s would cancel out. Well, here's the good news. You can put 5 on the top if you want to, as long as you're willing to put 5 on the other side as well. So, here I've recopied the equation, and I've put a 5 on the left side, just because I want that 5 to cancel out with the 5 I had. Because I put a 5 in the top of the left side, I'm now going to put a 5 in the top for the right side. And now the 5's will cancel. And all I'm left with is x equals 5 times 9, which is 45. And if you check it out, if you put x up here, in the, or if you put 45 up here in the place of x, you see that 45 divided by 5 does equal 9. So the left side is 9 and the right side is 9. And let's try another one like that. Some number divided by 3 equals 12. Now, you know, I know that your mind may jump to the number 4 because you see the 3 and the 12 and your mind just kind of automatically fills in that 4. But think about it. Could 4 divided by 3 equal 12? That doesn't make sense. So... What we want to do is solve. We want to cancel this 3 out of the bottom by putting a 3 in the top. So I'm going to put a 3 in the top here, and I'll put a 3 on the other side. Now my 3's will cancel, and x equals 3 times 12, which is 36. And let's check it out. If x divided by 3 equals 12, if I substitute 36 in there, does 36 divided by 3 equal 12? Yes, it does. So that check is good, and 36 really is the right solution here. Now let's look at equations where we don't have x divided by a number, but we have x times a number. So to cancel out a coefficient, you're just going to divide both sides by that coefficient. It's very similar to what we just did. To show division, we'll put the new number in the denominator, just like we have been doing throughout the order of operations and other places we've seen division represented as a fraction. We will do that here as well. And make sure that the number that you put in the bottom is the same sign as the number that you're trying to cancel out. That's very important as well. So let's solve 6x equals 30. So you know this says 6 times x equals 30. We know that x is probably 5 because 6 times 5 would be 30. But let's make the problem tell us the answer even though we kind of know it already. So I want to cancel out this 6. So to show that I'm dividing by 6, I'm going to make the fraction bar and put a 6 in the denominator. But if I go divided by 6 here, I'll have to go divided by 6 on the right side as well. Now the 6's on the left side cancel out, leaving us with x. And on the right side, 30 divided by 6 is 5. So that's it. Just divide both sides by whatever you're trying to cancel, and the right side will simplify to your answer. Here's another one. Negative 7y equals 56. So in this case, what I want to cancel out is a negative 7. So we're going to divide the left side by negative 7 and the right side by negative 7. Now, you know, we've talked about before, we won't leave the negative in the denominator, but it's okay to put it here while we're working things out, but we know that in the end we would never leave one there as our answer. So, on the left side, the 7's cancel, 
and the negatives cancel, and all we get on the left side is y. On the right side, 56 divided by negative 7 is negative 8. And now check it out. Negative 7 times negative 8 would be positive 56, and that's what we expect, so that means negative 8 is correct. And let's try another one here. 4x equals negative 32. Okay, 4 times some missing number is negative 32. So let's divide both sides by this coefficient that we want to cancel. So if I put a divided by 4 on the left side, I'll have to put a divided by 4 on the right side. Now cancel the 4's, and x equals negative 32 divided by 4 simplifies to negative 8. Now I, I want you to not be surprised or put off by fractional answers. Every answer is not going to be a whole number and that's okay. So let's look at a couple where we don't get a whole number as our answer. So I'm going to solve 5 times x equals negative 22. So 5 times some missing number equals negative 22. Now you know that that can't be a whole number because there's not a whole number that when you multiply it by 5 you get negative 22. Multiples of 5 go like 20, 25, 30. So this cannot be a whole number here. So to solve it, all we're going to do is divide both sides by that coefficient that we want to cancel. And that's going to cancel out the 5's and leave us with x equals negative 22 over 5, which is a fraction and that's okay. If we check it, I'm going to put the answer I think is right in the place of x. So 5 times our answer equals negative 22. And when I put this in place here, I can see that the 5's are going to cancel. And we're going to have negative 22 equals negative 22. So that's correct. Now let's solve negative 6x equals 20. So the negative 6 is what I want to cancel out. And I'm going to divide both sides by negative 6. And let's see where that gets us. The 6's and the negatives will cancel here and leave us with just x on the left side. And 20 divided by negative 6 makes a negative fraction. So notice that I've just moved the negative out from the bottom of the fraction. This is not a whole number, but it will reduce. 20 over 6, both numbers can be divided by 2. So when we do that, 20 divided by 2 is 10, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our fraction, our answer reduces to negative 10 over 3. So we've talked about this before, but just to remind you, 20 over negative 6 is the same as negative 20 over 6 or negative 20 over 6. So we just never leave the negative in the denominator we will move it to the front or to the top of the fraction. Also, okay, just as a reminder, never leave the negative in the denominator. Now let's check. So I'm going to take the x out and replace the x with what I think the answer is. So I'm going to put in negative 10 over 3 in place of x, and let's simplify this. Um, the negative 6 divided by 3 will simplify to, neg to a po negative 2, actually. Negative 6 divided by 3 simplifies to negative 2. And then negative 2 times negative 10 makes positive 20. So this one is correct as well. Now let's take a look at how to eliminate a fractional coefficient. Really, because we already know how to handle uh, denominators and how to handle coefficients, 
A fractional coefficient turns out just to be two different operations. And we're going to actually look at it as two, and then we're going to learn how to do it as just all in one step. So let's solve 3 fourths x equals 12. At first, yes, 3 fourths is one number. It's one fraction. But you can think of this as two separate numbers. You can think of it as times 3 and divided by 4. So to get rid of the uh, 4, we could put a 4 in the top. And if we put a 4 in the top, we're going to put a 4 in the top of the other side as well. Then to cancel out this 3, I could put a 3 in the bottom. And if I put a 3 in the bottom, i got to put a 3 in the bottom of the other side as well. And now notice what's going to happen to the 4s and 3s over here. They all cancel each other out, and we get x on the left side. Now look here. I'm going to divide first. So 12 divided by 3 gives me a whole number. 12 divided by 3 is 4, which I put here. And that 4 times this other 4 is going to be 16. And so we think 16 is the correct answer. Let's check it. So I've got 3 fourths times my number that I think is my answer equals 12. And so let's see if this is true. I'm going to simplify 16 over 4 first. 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. This 3 times my new 4 equals 12. So 3, 3 times 4 is 12. Both sides are the same. That means 16 was the correct solution. All right, another one. 9 equals negative 3 fifths times x. So did you notice on the last problem that by the time we had put the 4 and the 3 both in the right place, we really had just multiplied by the reciprocal? So we're going to do that here. See, if I, if I want to cancel out the 3 and the 5, I just need to put, them, put the new 5 and the new 3 in the opposite places. And if I put negative 5 over 3 on the right side, I've got to put negative 5 over 3 on the left side as well. So now let's simplify. The 9 is in the top. Think about what's the denominator of every whole number is 1. So let's simplify 9 over 3. 9 over 3 makes 3. 9 divided by 3 makes 3. So on my left side, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and that 3 times the negative 5 that was already there equals x, because all this stuff over here canceled out. And negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And we're going to check it. So I've copied my original equation over, except I substituted my answer in place of the x. And let's see if the right side equals the left side. So if I work this out, negative 15 divided by 5 gives me negative 3. And that, this negative 3 times the other negative 3 gives me positive 9. So that one does check out, and that means that negative 15 is the correct answer. All right, next example, we're going to solve 2 thirds y equals 16. So in order to get rid of the 2 thirds multiplier, let's multiply both sides by 3 over 2. So anytime I want to get rid of a fraction coefficient, I put its reciprocal on both sides. Now the 3's are going to cancel, the 2's are going to cancel, and over here on the right side, 16 over 2 is going to reduce to 8. So I have this 3 that I've put here, and 16 over 2 makes 8, therefore y is 3 times 8, which is 24. Now let's check that answer. 
So I'm going to go back to my original equation and replace the y with a 24. And let's do the simplifying here. So 24 divided by 3 gives me 8. So I have 2 times 8. And that is 16. And that is what I wanted to have on the right side. So that tells me that 24 is the correct answer. So we got that one right as well. All right, here is another one. 28 equals negative 7 fourths times x. So remember, in, in order to cancel out the negative 7 fourths coefficient, I multiply both sides by the reciprocal of negative 7 fourths which is negative 4 over 7. So when I flip this fraction over, it stays the same sign, but the numbers flip over. Now the 7's will cancel, and the, the 4's will cancel. Over here, negative 4 is here. 28 over 7 is going to give me a positive 4. So negative 4 times positive 4 makes negative 16 x is negative 16 then. And let's just check it. So here's my original equation with negative 16 put in place of the x. So I'm going to have negative 7 and then I'm going to simplify negative 16 over 4 which makes negative 4. Now negative 7 times negative 4 is positive 28. So that one checks out. And so that's all there is to these. Just anytime you want to get rid of a fractional coefficient, multiply both sides by its reciprocal.